Hi everyone, it's Eric from ecom12.blogspot.com and today we are going to take a look at the Leap Motion feature in the HP Envy 17. Now we're going to take a look at some applications that are specifically designed for the Leap Motion technology and see if it is useful or just an unnecessary gimmick. Let's get to it. Now let's start off by enabling Leap Motion. Now to do this, you simply press the Function and Spacebar keys at the same time, and you'll see that a couple LEDs light up on the sensor bar, and the green light in the window system tray will appear. So let's start off with the Leap Motion Tester. This is basically an introduction on how to use the Leap Motion technology, and it does the job very nicely. You have a few screens which you can switch between, and each one has something new for you to interact with. You can move all of these particles around by waving your hands, and my favourite is this one right here, where the sensor shows you what it sees. The animation and the way it consistently keeps up with my finger movements is really quite impressive. You can also paint these blue neon lines with a maximum of 10 fingers, which is pretty cool. I like the way it sparkles as you draw the lines. It reminds me of the sparks lightsabers make when they are cutting a hole through a wall. But I digress. All in all, this is a really nice little tech demo to get you started with Leap Motion. Now let's try out a game. Now I was surprised to find out that this game was actually associated with the Disney film Wreck-It Ralph. And that's pretty much where all the fun ends. It's basically a very similar racing game to Mario Kart, but lacking in pretty much everything that made that game fun. But let's forget all that for now and let us talk about the Leap Motion controls. One of the neat things you can do in this game is build your own cart. You can grab wheels, drop them onto the cart, and then release a whole bunch of sweets onto it and your vehicle is done and ready to race. I thought this was really quite creative actually, and it follows the movie very closely. Now let's move on to the most interesting part of the game, the racing. Before the timer goes down, the game presents you with an on-screen graphic which wants you to position both your fists above the leap motion sensor. Once you have done so, you can steer your hands in the air, and that will actually steer the car in the game. That is a really nifty idea. There are a couple problems though. Your fists have a very narrow range of movement above the sensor, and many times it fails to recognize the position of your hands, and you end up driving into the wall a lot more than you would expect. You don't get much accuracy with your steering either. That's one of the reasons I always miss the power-ups. It's really irritating. When you do get a power-up though, like a projectile, quite cleverly you do a punching motion and it fires at your opponent. Again, that is really quite nifty, but the good things really are few and far between. That being said, when it works, it's quite nice, but after one match, your arms do get really quite tired and then you'll just want to play the game with physical controls as it would be far less frustrating and more enjoyable. So yeah, this game is not really that impressive. Next we've got Duck and Kill, which I actually downloaded from the store. This is a very crude game and you'll soon see why. The objective of the game is to basically kill as many ducks as you can before the timer goes out. Yep, that's what the game is, and I intentionally downloaded it. What can I say? I find it very therapeutic. Good god, I really need to talk to someone. Anyway, the controls of this game really caught my eye, as you are supposed to shape your finger and thumb into a gun and then fling it up to fire. Kind of like how cowboys would normally shoot, and that's how you are supposed to fire at the ducks. This game was very awkward to control at first, but after playing it for about 5-10 to 10 minutes, you'll get the hang of it, and you will have some good fun with it too. This is a better example of Leap Motion technology, as the game really takes it into account, and it is a lot of fun as a result. As I bring this video to a close, I would just like to remind you that Leap Motion can be used for other applications as well, but this was just a short example to give you guys an idea as to how it worked and controlled. I personally am not convinced of this technology yet, as it needs a lot more polish and purpose, but as it stands, I can live without it. One thing I would like to say, in case any developers are tuning in, someone should make a game where you can use Leap Motion controls to make Spider-Man swing around the city in first person. I could see that being very intuitive. Anyway, thanks guys for watching this video. Coming up next week will be a gaming performance test of this HP Envy laptop. Until then, I will see all of you next time. Take care.